Okay, so how do you mend a broken heart? So most of you watching this have probably experienced heartbreak at some point in your life and asked yourself this question at least once in your life. But when our next guest experienced a life-shifting heartbreak of her own, she decided to turn to science for the answers. She talked to neuroscientists and psychologists and uncovers groundbreaking research in her new book, Heartbreak, A Personal and Scientific Journey. Trust me, this book will change the way you think about falling in and out of love. We are thrilled to welcome journalist and author Florence Williams to the show. Welcome, Florence. Thank you. It's great to be here. Okay, we're going to go right back to the beginning of your journey here because the catalyst for you writing this book was, in fact, your own divorce. So your, uh, you and your ex-husband, you met when you were 18. You were together for 32 years, and that's when he said, I want a separation. A lot of us in a heartbreak, we would just, I don't know, roll up on a, in a ball in our bathroom mm. or on our couch or something. Um, but you decided to turn your heartbreak into a book. So take us through how you went from that to the book. Well, you know, I was trying to figure out how to heal, how to get myself out of that curled ball on the floor. And I'm a journalist, so it's what I do. I like to put on my journalist hat, go out and ask questions, try to figure out what was going on, why this hurt so much, and how to get better. And I felt like the answers were surprising and interesting, and I figured other people are probably going through some heartbreak, too, and, and could use what I was finding out. Hmm. Florence, can't wait to delve into your research. And I kind of like putting a celebrity analogy to things. So there are some people who seem to be taken down by a, a breakup and have a really, really hard time recovering. I would put Selena Gomez into this category <laughs> with her breakup with Justin Bieber. And then there are other people who kind of brush it off, you know, can shake off a heartbreak easier than most. I would put J-Lo in this yes, category, right? Nice, nice. So is there evidence to suggest that certain people are predisposed to heartbreak over others? Yeah, it could be that people who have suffered trauma, who have childhood trauma, may have a harder time picking mm. themselves back up. But there are certain personality traits that we know are also associated with that kind of resilience. And um, one of them is openness, curiosity, the ability to still find some joy, some beauty, even when you're grieving. It's possible to hold these two emotions at once. And the people who can find beauty and be curious about themselves are the ones who are best able to find some meaning, um, to move on with a new story and imagine a better future. That's definitely J-Lo. Definitely J-Lo, yeah. <laughs> Heartbreak is not her brand, let me tell you that right now. Okay, so still with the media, I think oftentimes we see these recurring narratives that when it comes to how men handle a heartbreak, perhaps uh, versus women. So let's talk about your research. Was there a difference in how the, the genders experience heartbreak? Well, we know that men and women both suffer. They both grieve after a heartbreak. But it looks like, on average, sometimes men get angrier. They get more vengeful. Um, sometimes they take that anger out on their exes or on their partners. Uh, we know that after a divorce, for example, men who stay single are more likely to have health problems. So maybe it was wow. the wife who was telling them, you know, you need to go to the doctor, you need to eat better food, stop smoking. And so sometimes they do worse. But we also know that women take this blow so seriously because we're so relational. Um, our identities are so bound up in our families and in our roles. And so it's really hard for women too. Yeah. And you know what? You really explore what heartbreak does to the body. Um, and you visited one scientist who scanned the brains of people who had been broken up with. And the thing is, we know in general terms what pain and trauma do to us physically. But how would you describe specifically the way heartbreak changes the brain? Yeah, when, when this scientist looked at our brains, what she found is that when we're suffering this kind of emotional pain, it's actually similar parts of our brains that process physical pain. So we really feel it as pain. It's not just a metaphor. And the other thing is we know that parts of our brains light up associated with craving and addiction because we're missing this person. Mm. We want them back. We still want those feel-good hormones associated of being in the relationship. Um, and so we're really stressed out because we know these good feelings are suddenly gone. So let's continue that because we know, like, as you just said, heartbreak can also make people physically sick. And you actually cite one piece of evidence that was fascinating to me. And it said that divorce can be more dangerous for our health than smoking. Oof. Uh, in your case, you developed 
type one diabetes after your divorce. So let's uh, delve deeper into this connection between heartbreak and health through that experience. Sure. So, you know, when we've been rejected in love, our brains and our nervous systems don't really make the distinction between that kind of rejection and being literally abandoned out in the jungle to stumble along by ourselves. And so our immune systems start pumping out more inflammation. This is supposed to help us if we get attacked by a predator or if we get a flesh wound, it can be helpful. But unfortunately, you know, we live in modern life. Um, we need our immune systems to fight other things like viruses. And in fact, too much inflammation, we now know for an extended period of time, if we stay feeling heartbroken and lonely, can lead to all kinds of chronic illnesses like metabolic disease, cardiovascular disease, even things like dementia and Alzheimer's. Okay, so the, the obvious question then is whether or not heartbreak can actually break your heart. So you explore a heartbreak-related disease. It's actually most common among postmenopausal women. What should we know about broken heart syndrome? Sure. You know, we think of broken hearts as being a metaphor, but in mm -hmm. fact, there is a literal kind of heartbreak that can happen when we're feeling really big emotions that stress us out. We put out so much adrenaline, stress hormones, our receptors in our heart um, sense this kind of adrenaline, and our left ventricle balloons out so that we're unable to pump effectively. So, um, this is a kind of heart failure that shows up in about 5% of all hospital admissions, this emotion-related heartbreak. It's not caused by a blocked artery like most heart disease. Uh, and wow. we know that it's not fatal for most people. Um, you know, 95% of people will recover, but 20% will still go on to have some kind of heart-related health effects. Wow. That is wild. I know. It's just, that mind-body yeah. connection is unbelievable. Yeah. It really is. So you're, you're gathering all of this research, all of this information, and, and it's, you know, listen, we're probably not going to avoid heartbreak in our lives, we know, but let's, like, figure out hacks. Like, can we cheat the system mm -hmm. now that we're figuring out all of this really fascinating information? Is there a heartbreak hack? Well, there really is. And in my book, I talk about this, that one of the things we really need to do is find connection, right? So we don't feel so lonely. But the secret heartbreak hack that nobody talks about is this ability to really find beauty. So every day we need to go out, we need to look at beauty, something beautiful. We need to sit there, take some deep breaths, um, feel like we can um, be mindful in this moment, let our hearts open back up to joy and to beauty. And then they will also open back up to love. And that's really what it's all about. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the physical and emotional pain of heartbreak, um, but from a scientific and now personal perspective, have you found any benefits <laughs> to experience? <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but are there any good things to come out of a heartbreak? Yeah, we know from psychologists who study this that there is something called post-adversity growth or post-traumatic growth. And it's when we're able to sort of step back enough and find the meaning and find the lessons in this kind of trauma or, you know, emotional pain. And when we are, we understand better what it means to have big emotions. We learn to become more comfortable with them. We learn how to recognize these big emotions in other people. We become better listeners. We become more empathetic. Ultimately, Ultimately, I believe we really do become more capable of showing up for the people in our lives and finding love in whatever way that looks, whether it's our community, our friends, or in a romantic way down the road. Florence, what fascinating research you've put into this book. Thank you so much. It's been great speaking with you. Thanks so much for having me. The book, it's called Heartbreak, and you can find it everywhere now.